Another very important experiment that uh, shows us the, the particle nature of light is the photoelectric effect. Uh, in this experiment, we have light that is incident on a metal surface called the emitter. Uh, as a result of interaction with these electromagnetic waves, electrons are ejected from the surface, surface of the emitter, and they are uh, going to be collected by a collector where they gain a potential energy, uh, Q delta V, in the process. So uh, these electrons that are ejected from the emitter due to a light exposure are called uh, photoelectrons. So light incident on a certain metallic surface emitter causes photoelectrons to be emitted and collected by the collector which is kept at a positive potential with respect to the emitter. Now for a photoelectron uh, we have the change in its kinetic energy plus change in its potential energy is equal to zero. There is an energy gained during the interaction with light but after that uh, we have an initial kinetic energy. Uh, all of the energy is in the kin initial kinetic energy of these electrons. The final pot uh, potential energy uh, and uh, final kinetic energy is zero, which is just before hitting the uh, collector. Uh, the initial potential energy is zero and the electrons gain a potential energy Q delta V because this is kept at a potential uh, delta V with respect to the emitter during this process. So final kinetic energy just before hitting the collector is zero. Initial kinetic energy is Ki, zero minus Ki plus final potential energy Q delta V minus initial potential energy is zero is equal to zero. This gives us the following relationship between initial kinetic energy and final potential energy. Initial kinetic energy is Q times delta V, which is minus E, the electron charge, times uh, delta V. So you can see that if uh, delta V is uh, negative, uh, the photoelectrons will decelerate uh, in, the, um, in the collector. So... Uh, if we reach a certain potential called the stopping potential, delta V is equal to minus delta Vs, then the photoelectron stops uh, when reaching the collector. So this is called the stopping potential. Uh, K max, the maximum kinetic energy they can have is E times delta Vs. So that's when they stop when reaching the collector. This is the maximum possible initial kinetic energy they can have. So if we look at... Uh, what happens to the current that flows in the circuit. So these electrons collected by the collector, if there is a potential difference between these two, will form a current. You can see if I have a positive potential, there will be a current flowing in the circuit. So for applied voltage that is positive, we will have a current which actually saturates uh, a quite quickly when we have a positive voltage. And by changing the intensity of the light, we see that the current increases with intensity, but reaches a saturation level for large values of delta V. On the other hand, if we apply a negative potential, uh, when we reach a stopping potential minus delta Vs, uh, at voltages equal to or more negative than minus delta Vs, the current will be zero. There will be no current flow in the circuit. So the collector will be uh, at a minus polarity with respect to the emitter in terms of potential. Okay, so let's analyze this effect. Uh, the, there are some important features of the photoelectric effect we have to explain. The first one is the dependence of the photoelectron kinetic energy on intensity. <coughs> So if we increase the intensity, classical theory says, intensity is the average power per perpendicular area, which is the average uh, value of the pointing vector magnitude, 1 over 2 mu 0 c e max square. So what happens as we increase the intensity, since we will have more power hitting the uh, hitting the unit area, we, sh we should expect that the kinetic energy of the electrons uh, should increase as a result. 
Experimentally, we find that this maximum kinetic energy is independent of the light intensity. Both high intensity and low intensity curves meet at a stopping potential minus delta Vs so that K max is equal to plus E delta Vs. So you can see that by changing the intensity, I have no control on the stopping potential. Therefore, the maximum kinetic energy they can have is a constant regardless of the intensity of light. The second important problem is the time interval between incidence of light and ejection of photoelectrons. Now, classical theory says if we have very low intensities, uh, rate of change of energy per perpendicular area, it should take time for the electrons to absorb enough energy to be ejected. So uh, electrons should be released from the surface. So it should take some time for these electrons to absorb this energy because we have very low intensity. The EDT per perpendicular area is very low. Experimental result is that the time it takes for the ejection of the electrons is of the order of 1 nanoseconds and this is true even at very low intensities. It's not a function of intensity. So we have a, a very fast uh, ejection of photoelectrons as they're uh, exposed to light and independent of the intensity uh, we have a very low ejection time. Uh, number three, dependence of ejection of electrons on light frequency. So nothing in the classical theory talks about light frequency. As long as the intensity is high enough, we should be supplying enough energy and electrons can be ejected. However, experimental result is that for frequencies below a cutoff frequency Fc that depends on the material, electrons are not ejected. So you can see if you plot K max versus F, this depends on which material we use, but uh, there is a cutoff frequency F uh, below which electrons are not ejected. So below the cutoff frequency, we don't see ejection of photoelectrons. However, uh, the classical theory says uh, the light frequency should have no role on this. As long as the intensity is high enough, electrons should be we should be able to eject photoelectrons. Number four, dependence of photoelectron kinetic energy on light frequency. Uh, once again, this kinetic energy is a function of intensity according to classical theory. It doesn't depend on frequency. Experimentally, we find that the maximum kinetic energy they can have is directly proportional to frequency. As you can see here, K max versus F graph is linear so it's directly proportional to frequency okay so let's summarize the photoelectric effect we have a light incident on a metal surface that ejects photoelectrons which are collected by a collector they have an initial kinetic energy k initial final kinetic energy is zero just before they hit the uh, collector and uh, at the same time we're, we apply a potential difference between the collector and emitter so the electrons gain a potential energy Q delta V with respect to the emitter with, with initial potential energy zero. If this delta V is negative the photoelectrons will decelerate as they approach the uh, collector and there will be a stopping potential delta V is equal to minus delta Vs uh, for which the current that flows in the circuit will become zero. If the potential is more negative than this, it will be zero current flow in this circuit. And the maximum kinetic energy the electrons can have is equal to the uh, electron charge E multiplied with the uh, stopping potential delta Vs. So it's plus E delta Vs. And we see that when we increase the intensity, we observe the current that flows in the circuit increases, but the stopping potential is unaffected. Therefore, the maximum kinetic energy is not a function of intensity. And which is one of the first features of the photoelectric effect. K max is independent of light intensity, whereas classical theory suggests as intensity increases, kinetic energy of the electrons should increase. The second e property of the photoelectric effect is that the time it takes for the electrons to absorb energy from incident light and get ejected is 
uh, in, uh, not a function of intensity. It's independent of intensity. It's very low. Uh, the third property, the ejection of electrons depends on light frequency below a cutoff frequency. They don't get ejected, but classical theory suggests as long as the intensity is high enough, electrons should be ejected. And number four, the photoelectron kinetic energy depends on light frequency experimentally, but classically it should not depend on light frequency, it should depend on the intensity of the incident light.